Hey, what's going on guys? It's Wispin here and welcome back to another video here on the Poke Central Network. Today I have some pretty awesome stuff to show you. So, not only did I completely remake the entire factory, the Pokeball factory that we have down in the secret base, completely new design, way more efficient, way cooler looking, and completely gets rid of all of the minecarts and stuff, although those are kind of cool. They're not really efficient, and they really get kind of messed up when you're on a server, and not everything always runs perfectly smooth. So, I'll show you guys that new change here in a minute, and if you guys are interested in a tutorial once you see it, let me know down in the comments. I also want to show you the brand new display blocks that we have here on the server, and... I want to test some things with those because I think you could make a pretty cool farm. Now, we'll start things off by just heading down into the secret base. And let me go ahead and toggle on fly. And showing off the Pokeball Factory. I've only done 50% of it because I wanted to just get it done and start recording this video and show you guys. I was super excited. So maybe we'll go ahead and add the mechanical anvil side a little bit later on. But for now, this is the new little factory so i think it looks a lot better it looks a lot cleaner and a lot cooler and this is basically how it works so this is a generic super smelter uh people like mumbo jumbo have made pretty similar things and i think he got his design from someone else maybe i'm not entirely sure but i want to give credit where credit is due and that is the video that i saw that gave me the inspiration didn't look exactly like this but pretty similar so you can see there are actually 12 furnaces there's six on each side and we could expand this further out as far as we wanted i think we can go as long well we can go we can go pretty far back maybe another 10 or so blocks but i didn't really feel that was necessary because 12 furnaces is more than fast enough for our needs so you can see here we have a lot of apricorns and the way that it actually works is you put the coal in here you put the apricorns in here and it just distributes it through the hoppers uh, you use a comparator and a redstone signal to make sure that all of the furnaces are synchronized but other than that that's pretty much the entire system and it's a lot cleaner than the other one that i had set up here previously so this is a generic super smelter super easy to build and don't really need to make a tutorial on that because it already exists. However, I want to try to design something similar for the mechanical anvil side of things. And that's going to be new because nobody's made a mechanical anvil automated factory smelter sort of thing before since not that many people upload Pixelmon redstone videos. So I'll probably do something like that if you guys are interested in it. And I can also showcase this in that same video because I'm pretty sure the design is going to be pretty similar with the exception of where the hoppers on top actually are. But yeah, you can see it's constantly filling up with more items. You can look back at how many items we had when I first opened this chest and how many we have now. It goes up pretty quickly. So now moving on to the... I think cooler part of this video if we warp on over to I believe we want to go warp shop and purchase ourselves a new display block so basically this is a ranch block a pixelmon ranch block you can see here gonna be similar to this where you can put your Pokemon in and they will roam around the area now we do have breeding disabled with these because you breed in the daycare not in the ranch blocks but there are a couple of really cool things you can do with this block and like I said I want to test some little farm things because I know you can shoot your Mareeps, or at least you used to be able to. I think you still can, and I think you can also get buckets of lava from certain Pokemon. So I could be wrong about both of those things, but I do remember those mechanics being a part of Pixelmon at some point in time. Let's go ahead and purchase ourselves three of these ranch blocks, and because I actually have admin perms, it's going to give them to me for free. So we're going to do eco uh, remove wispin 300,000 because that is how much that costs. And you can see now my balance went down. Uh, so that is good. I don't want to abuse that and buy them for free because, like I said, it just gives me the kit for free because that's how it works if you have admin perms. Let's go ahead and warp on our slash home. And let's go actually, we'll just do it out front for now. So I don't even know if I have a Mareep. And I think the Pokemon that gives lava was maybe Camerupt or something like that. So if we put them in the ranch blocks, let's go ahead and do that. Here we go. Do we have any Mareeps? Let's see. Do we have like a Shadow Mareep? Any kind of Mareep at all? We do have... No. I don't see any. Huh, okay. 
Well, we can probably find one fairly easily. And then do we have any camera ups or numels that we can evolve? I always miss Pokemon when they're right in front of me. So if I do miss it, I apologize. But I don't see those either. But I knew we had a numel at one point. Maybe we released it. All right, so we got ourselves the Mareep. We got one Mareep, probably want more than one, and then we have a bunch of Numels. Now, I do want to say, before I make this, not really going to be worth it, not really efficient at all to make this sort of a farm, although the Lava Buckets, if it does end up working out, could be cool. But the Wool, not really worth it because these display blocks cost 100,000 coins, and you could buy many, 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 many stacks of Wool for that price. So I do not recommend for the Mareeps, but it's still a pretty cool mechanic, so it's worth checking out. And then the new moles we do need to, I think, evolve. We're gonna just evolve one of them here. And then, actually, how many rare candies? There we go, okay. We're gonna evolve one just for testing purposes. I wanna see if you can get a bucket of lava from a camera up, from a new mole, or neither. I don't know for sure, but we'll go ahead and check things out here once this guy evolves. And then I think we need to put them all into the PC, so. Uh, let's just go back to an empty box here, 29, and we'll throw everybody in here. And then let's actually, do I have empty buckets in my, yep, there we go. Let's grab five buckets, and let's go ahead and test this thing out. So, Marie, okay, we need shears, actually. We need shears as well. I still don't have any iron. Wait, didn't I buy a bunch of iron? Didn't I buy, like, 35 iron in, like, the last episode? I don't, oh well. I have no idea what happened to that. Oh, no, still don't know. I was going to say I might have left it in a chest down in the in the factory, but no idea where it went because that chest is now gone. So it's going to be gone forever. I really want to make a sorting system here. Well, honestly, I think if I end up making a vanilla server and playing some vanilla Minecraft here on the channel, I'll probably save that for that channel because... Pixelmon plus sorting systems doesn't really work. There's way too many items. You need a separate sorting system for Pixelmon items as well as for the Minecraft items, and both of them would be massive. So it's just not really worth it, especially because Pixelmon has so many different little items that are just so rare. Like, right here, this would be... I mean, each item would need its own chest, which at that point, you're talking about literally thousands of chests so probably not worth it so yeah no sorting system unfortunately although we could make one for just vanilla items i don't know let's head on out we have all of the tools we need to test this and i really hope it still works because this is going to be a big waste of time if it doesn't okay marie hello you can't do it oh no couldn't you maybe it's you can't do it in the ranch block wasn't this a mechanic guys Anybody that's played, am I dreaming? Because I swear it used to be a mechanic where you could right click on Mareep to shear it. Okay, oh, you can get buckets of lava from a camera opt, but it seems like it's a limited amount. What if you take them out and put them back in? Wow, okay, so you, that is worth it. That is really worth it. Uh, you can get basically unlimited blocks of lava from a camera up just by doing that that is really cool so that i would definitely recommend if you're going to be getting one of these perfect way to farm lava and uh you don't really want to burn things down with the lava but you can use this as a fuel source completely renewable infinite fuel source for your smelters uh now i wouldn't necessarily recommend it for things like the auto smelter that I have set up because I think the buckets will get stuck inside the furnaces and that'll mess everything up but if you just need to smelt some things on the side and you're doing it manually definitely worth it and actually maybe the buckets get taken out of the furnaces I don't know uh, but let's test Numel so Numel cannot so you have to get an actual camera up now I'm a little bit I swear you could shear a Marie couldn't you that seems so weird to me I <laughs> I don't know. Let me know. Could you use to shear Marie? Maybe if we actually put him on our team and toss him out, maybe then we can. Nope, still no shearing. Hmm. Weird. Thought I thought that was a thing. I guess I'll I'll ask the developers of the mod because maybe that like came to me in a dream or something. But it's a cool idea either way, and I don't know why it doesn't work. 
But yeah, I really love these blocks. They are pretty expensive. They're just for cosmetic purposes. Just if you're rich on the server and you want to show off all your legendaries and stuff, you can just do that outside your house. It looks pretty awesome, and you can get as many of these as you want. You could build a zoo on the server. I really, really would love if somebody, like, just completely invested so much time in building a zoo with a ton of these ranch blocks and, like, got every single Pokemon in the game in this massive zoo building or something really cool like that. Or at least go for, like, every Gen 1 Pokemon and then made like exhibits for each one. That could be so amazing, such a cool project to work on. And I've always wanted to make something like that. It's just such a huge time investment. So maybe maybe if you have you and your group of friends on the server or you wanna group up with some other players and work on a project like that, that would be really cool. And if you end up making it, I will definitely check it out in a video. And it's just so amazing because you can make showcases for all different types of Pokemon. We can actually go back to our uh, aura box here and we can see Look at this. They all keep their effects, they keep their nicknames, they keep all their, their textures and all of that stuff. So you can just display all of your really cool and unique Pokemon. And I don't know, I just find it to be really, really cool. And I think it's an awesome new addition to the server. Let's see, what other Pokemon? We could put like our Molten Matang, our Tyrantrum, our Flygon, our uh, Anubis Ryolu. And look at it. They're just, it's so awesome. I don't know. I just find this really cool. I don't know if you guys feel the same way about it, but I think it could definitely make some pretty cool improvements to your bases. Uh, now, you do got to keep in mind these ranch blocks. Your Pokemon aren't going to breed. We purposely disabled that. Like I said before, you're supposed to use the daycare, which I can confirm. Well, I confirmed it in yesterday's video, but we have sped it up a little bit, and I've definitely seen some improvements. We can actually take these eggs out, and I'll let you know how long it takes me to get the new ones. And yes, I did remove all of the item frames from my chest in case you're wondering. I don't really like labeling my chest with item frames at this point in time. Maybe we'll add them back at some point in the future or change up the way that we label them. But I pretty much know where everything is, I say, as I open up the wrong chest twice in a row. <laughs> uh, but yeah, for the most part, I know where everything is. So we shouldn't really have to worry about that too much. All right, guys, so I did go ahead and actually expand this a little bit. I went ahead and actually added in the mechanical anvils. Now, the problem is the way that this is set up, if we're going to go ahead and actually make it the right size, which would be 12 of these mechanical anvils, it's going to be really wide. It's going to be almost twice as wide as this one over here, I think. So we can't really do that. We could try and either stack them on top of each other or just expand this back another six blocks to make it the same size, which is probably what I will actually end up doing just because that'll be the easiest thing to do is just go ahead and dig this out and expand this back another six mechanical anvils. But it pretty much functions the exact same way as the other one. We have our coal input on this side, our uh, lids and bases on this side, and they go into these two chests up front, and then our items go out here. So pretty much the exact same setup. Actually, now that I, now that I see this, um, yeah, it, it looks okay. It's not symmetrical, but I think it looks pretty cool and I'll definitely improve it. This was really just to cover up most of the redstone. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves. Well, we don't really have anything here. Uh, where's, ooh, I thought I put some blue ones into there, but apparently not. So let's warp on over to the shop and let's grab ourselves those apricorns the blue ones so we can get a few stacks of those as well because they're going to be super important for crafting the quick balls that i actually want to make uh that's not even really enough let me get a full inventory of these and then we'll go ahead and test out the other side and see if it actually works i have no idea all right that's probably enough for now let's go slash back and let's just go ahead and toss these in here and see if this works because I, I thought i put in blue apricorns already but apparently not well, there we go. We see they all triggered at the exact same time, which is great. And we might even need to add some more coal at some point. I'm not entirely sure on how much is actually in the system. But for now, it's cleaning things out. And we should start seeing blue apricorns down here piling up pretty quickly. All right. So I think the coal goes in this side here. And I think the lids belong over on this side here. So let's go ahead and toss these in and see if this starts to actually function. And they turned on. Okay. Awesome. So, again, it's not going to be as efficient as this side just because there's only six instead of the 12 that's over here. But I'm going to expand this thing down 
back into the wall because we can pretty much just cover it all up anyways and all you have to do to expand it is just take this redstone here move it back add in some extra hoppers add in the extra mechanical anvils and extend this redstone line so should be pretty straightforward and we already have 12 wow this is this is way better than the other design and you can see just in the few seconds that it took to put all of those items in there, we already have a stack and a half of the blue apricorns over here, which is incredible. You really don't need something much faster than this. You can definitely improve it quite a bit. You can make it as big as you want. You could add in hundreds upon hundreds of these furnaces, just spread them out, take up some more space, extend the lines back further, and you could make this thing massive, make it smelt 100,000 items every five seconds. I don't know. It would probably crash the server, probably lag things out, but you could potentially do it maybe in a single player world if you really wanted to. And same with this one here, but I don't know. I feel like this is probably good enough for now. Of course, like I said, still going to expand this one, but I think 12 is the number that we're going to stick with. So we actually have all of these apricorns all smelted up, which means we should be able to create quite a few stacks of the quick balls. Each of these is going to give three stacks, which is... A ton of items we're actually gonna run out of inventory space here pretty soon and that's just crazy now I wonder I guess pixelmon items aren't over here in this menu that's kind of unfortunate because it does make crafting a whole lot easier but that's okay let's actually can we close this how do we oh there we go and let's grab a few more stacks here we go and I keep messing that up because I'm used to putting blue or yellow on the outside with the ultra balls but that's okay and final stack here and we'll actually go ahead and just put the rest back in here so we'll do that 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 and now we have all of these to smelt which means we're probably going to need more coal in this system over here let me go ahead and head on home and i think we have plenty of coal here let's just grab all of this and we'll split it up between the two smelters here so we'll put in like one two three four five six stacks there because we have six mechanical anvils and we'll put in the rest actually put in like that's 10 stacks there and then we'll put in a couple more in here so that should keep things running pretty smoothly and we should see this chest fill up with a ton of these quick ball lids so really all we need to do now is figure out a way to get the actually now that i think about it i was gonna say we need to figure out a way to get the bases which are crafted out of iron which if we head back we should be able to grab some and I can show you exactly what I mean here so generally you will go ahead and take three iron and craft this to get an iron disc which is the bottom half of your pokeball so I was thinking possibly instead of actually expanding this back we could just go ahead clone it here put this here and use a entirely separate system for iron discs but that's kind of a waste of materials. We might as well just expand it. We'll save a little bit, save a little bit of space as well. But the more important thing is figuring out a way to farm these efficiently. So mining is a good way to get iron, but I don't know if it's really that efficient considering you have to go out and manually mine all the blocks. And I don't think there's really any other way to farm iron in Pixelmon. Regular Minecraft, you can make a giant iron farm with villagers and iron golems and all of that stuff. But in Pixelmon, there's just really no way to do that. And it's the same with the coal. The coal is not currently renewable. It would be awesome if we could figure out a way to make it renewable. And there is actually one other thing I wanted to say about the branch blocks. So you can just destroy them. You don't even need to take the Pokemon out and your Pokemon will all just stay in your PC, which is where they are the whole time. They're just locked into the ranch block. But if you do end up buying one of these and decide that you don't really want it, what you can do is either sell it to another player for maybe 90,000 coins or something, give them a slight discount, somebody might be interested in that, or just visit any shopkeeper and you can sell it for 75,000. Now, they do cost 100,000, so you're going to be losing a little bit of money, but at least you can get some back if you end up changing your mind about the ranch blocks or if you just end up wanting to sell part of them because you need money or something. I don't know. So we are actually going to be opening up five of these hallowed eggs. So I do want to say before we get into it, there is actually a 40% off sale over on the server store. Everything network-wide is 40% off. That includes these eggs, as well as ore eggs, shadow eggs, all of the ranks, all of the gems and items and everything else that you could possibly want. 40% off at buy.pokecentral.org. 
and all of the money from those purchases goes towards supporting the server, keeping it updated, and of course supporting this channel as well, allowing me to continue uploading these videos every single day. But let's just go ahead and jump straight into opening up these eggs. Here we go. Number one, I'm really hoping that we get the Sableye. That is the one Pokemon that I still have yet to get that I really, really want. Now, there's a few others that we haven't got yet, which are like the Legendaries. Um, we've definitely already got, I think, three of those Spirit Tombs, so that's, I guess, okay. But I'm trying to see if there's any other Pokemon in here through the list as they slide by that we haven't gotten yet. And I don't think there is. I think we've pretty much gotten everything. Other than that Sableye, which is crazy considering it's one of the Pokemon that I really, really want. I'm just not seeing it too much in here. I haven't seen it at all yet, I don't think. Well, you know what? I will take another ca Cactia. Uh, the Patchwork Cacnea is one of the best textures that was added in this update. It actually won first place in the little contest that we had. So definitely a cool Pokemon and definitely really valuable. But I still want just that Sableye. There it is. It is evading me. And we got another Spirit Tomb. Wow. Okay. All of the dupe. Oh, there was there was a Jirachi. That was one of the only legendaries we've seen. The the legendaries in these eggs are actually one one in ten. So uh, they have one tenth the rarity of a regular Pokemon, I believe. Or is I think it's either one tenth or one fifth. I can't I can't remember actually, but. Either one of those. So they are slightly rarer than regular Pokemon just to ensure that they aren't super overpopulated here on the server. But wow, we got another Blood Moon Spear Tomb. We got two of them there. And we got another Gothic Veneer, which is actually a pretty cool Pokemon. Uh, but because it's a duplicate, not really too, too excited about that. That brings us up to five of those those Spear Tombs. That's crazy. Duplicates on the Cacnea. We got another... Oh, did we never get a Ritual Hone Edge before? Apparently not. Okay. Well, we'll take a look at this one. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. We need to evolve that. We actually need to go through and evolve all of our Pokemon in this box. Uh, what we could do is for Pokemon that have evolutions, for example, the Bloodshot Onyx, we could keep one Onyx and evolve one into Steelix so that we have both. Same with, like, the Trap Inch here, the Slime here, uh, the Slugma, and then the the bag on all of them really we could just keep one of the basic and evolve one so that we have every single pokemon possible uh but yeah this is our complete collection of our hallowed pokemon so far pretty cool stuff now guys we have been trying to put out some really cool updates on the server and we have some really cool stuff in the works as well but i wanted to go ahead and ask you because i haven't in a while if you have any suggestions for this server any ideas any feedback anything at all you can either leave it in the comments down below or you can message me over on discord with all of your ideas and we will take those into consideration and consider actually putting them on the server we've done that a lot in the past where we take players ideas implement them on the server and everybody really loves it so don't hold back if you do have any ideas message me directly on discord that's the best place to get feedback on your ideas and actually receive a response and i'll try my best to respond to everyone i can't promise anything but if you message me a few times most likely you will receive a response but with that being said, I think I am going to go ahead and end this video here. If you guys do want that tutorial on the Pokeball Factory, go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. Let me know actually by leaving a like on this video. And if this video gets enough of a response in the likes, I will actually go ahead and upload a tutorial video on that. It's pretty straightforward, but I'm sure some of you that don't really get into Redstone too much could still benefit from the tutorial. But with that being said, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.